you did mention this earlier, like homeostasis versus optimization, but I mean, this is the weirdest mm -hmm. part for me is over here with conventional allopathic medicine, it's being utilized in a very medicalized way to treat extreme pathology. Yeah. And the way that I'm talking about it is, hey, it's got this potential to do some really cool things in an entirely different dosage strategy over here in somebody who is already, they just need a little tinkering, right? Mm -hmm. So you call it optimization or longevity. It's just a little tinkering. And that's who would come into my practice is I, I it was application only. I only wanted to treat people who had done the work for decades and just needed yeah. a little tinkering because it was not ethical to put regenerative injections into somebody's joints who were a complete train wreck of health. No disrespect, but like it's, you have to be able to heal for these injections to work. It doesn't matter how fancy the solution and the syringe is. If the body's not in a healing state, they're not going to take or keep or hold very long. And I think that's a, I think a lot of regenerative injection docs don't screen their patients. They'll take anyone. And I think it's mm -hmm. super unethical. I think the same thing about peptides. So when folks are needing really high doses of something, that's a very pharmacologic, medicalized, it's a totally different conversation than what I'm trying to have. I'd love to hear how you go about discussing this with your clients or with the public. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm on the same page as you. I think that, um, I think that we are conditioned as a society to be looking, to be looking for a silver bullet and it doesn't really exist. And I think when the GLP ones came out to your point, everybody's like, Oh, silver bullet. Yay. All I have to do is take this shot once a week and I'm going to be skinny and it's going to be amazing. And my problems will be over. And then lo and behold, everybody's like, oh, but I lost all my muscle. It turns out that sitting on the couch, eating a donut a day, <laughs> wasn't so good for me after all. I mean, I got skinny. I got that part. Right. But, but, oh, look at my face is too skinny. And, and, and I have no muscle left. And it's like, yeah, so dude, here's the thing. Like your, your body's super smart. And if you don't give it a reason to hang on to muscle, it's going to ditch it because <laughs> it's really expensive real estate. So it's, you know, it's, it's, I just, I just think that we, and I, and I believe that, and if people are listening to this podcast, my guess is they're already on this boat. Like they get it. Yeah. You know, they, they understand that we need to keep looking at how can we continue to create a terrain in our bodies that facilitates healing and improvement. And so me becoming metabolically flexible is one of those things. And I think that's, you know, and I think that like my body fights metabolic flexibility tooth and nail. And so I have to work at it. Like I got to work out and I got to watch my diet and I got to do all the things. And yeah, you know what? I'll dip into the GLP ones every once in a while just to give myself a tune up because it's, I, you know, like every gene I have that could possibly put me to type two diabetes is switched on. Me too. So <laughs> <laughs> Me too. It's like, you know, good luck, and sister. <laughs> and I'm not going there for good, you know, like it's just not going to happen. But we have to also manage things that are making us inflamed. And, you know, I just had, I just had a test read by a, a scientist, like that looked at how are my mitochondria working? And he's like, wow, you know, you're this pathway is working really well, but that pathway is not looking so good. And so, so, you know, so we're, you're, we're constantly going in to, to understand what are the aspects of our physiology that are dragging us down and what can we do to bring them up? And so as a result, the cool thing is today we have all these incredible tools that weren't necessarily available to us even 10 years ago, mm -hmm. right? When it comes to peptides and, and the GLP ones have really changed the game. And I think the G I'm with you that GLP ones are an incredible tool for people who are willing to use them properly. And, and, and the danger of them is it's easy not to use them properly and to get what seems like the, the result they want, but then they end up realizing that, you know, being skinny fat's no hell. No, that's, <laughs> well, it, it significantly increases your risk for all cause mortality. I mean, folks who are skinny fat, thin on the outside, fat on the inside, have a higher risk for death from all causes than folks who are heavy set and mm -hmm. metabolically compromised. It's a disaster. Yeah. It's a, it's an absolutely crippling of the metabolic health. If people crank those things and don't do anything else, I think it's a disaster waiting to happen on the other side.